Hey, what's up guys? I'm BTC. Today we're going to be going over the best strategies for winning the 1v1 Mystery Brawl in the Overwatch Arcade. Now with me is one of the best players in the world. He is a Grandmaster Top 500 player. He has won over 200 1v1 games and is currently undefeated. Let's welcome Skill. Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? In this video, we're going to go over both the tank and the support roles, and that's because some of the support heroes have been removed from the 1v1. We're going to start with the tank class, and first up is going to be D.Va. So, as soon as the game starts, you're going to fly up to your bridge and wait for your opponent to show up. As soon as you see them, just start unloading uh, your left click. Uh, you're pretty much never going to want to right click ever, and you're not going to want to use your speed boost ever to approach. Uh, the reason being is there is a startup delay when you uh, use your right click and your left click as well as when you use your speed boost where you can't fire. Um, like with uh, the Reaper and the McCree situation, you can't heal, so any damage you do is permanent for the whole game. So even at a distance, just start unloading. There's no reason not to hold down your left click. Um, as soon as your opponent gets launched out, or as soon as you get launched out of your mech, the game changes slightly. You're going to want to try to catch up to them as much as possible, and your aiming ability really comes into play here. It's possible that the mini diva gets away from you at like 10% HP, and she gets her mech back. If at this point this happens, you immediately lose. Um, so you want to keep track of the mini diva you want to be on her 100 of the time or there's a possibility you could lose so that's probably the only time you want to use your boost is if a mini diva is like starting to get away or or duck into corners and stuff like that exactly so pretty much just get up onto the bridge and the moment you see the enemy diva just hold left click and do nothing but hold left click and track the target and that's pretty much it right exactly and pray to the rng gods that you get decent shots on them <laughs> I mean, that's basically what it comes down to all right next up is reinhardt all right so for reinhardt your e is your best friend now you're pretty much never going to be using melee you're never going to be up close to your opponent unless one of you is about to die so basically you're going to try to outsmart your opponent kind of outthink them a little bit you're going to want to kind of fake the way that you throw your ease um and basically that's what it comes down to i mean if you land one or two and they don't land any on you then you can pretty much say that you won the game because what it comes down to towards the end of the game is one of the reinhardts get impatient they charge in now if you got one or two hits in and they charge you then you can still win the fight but uh, if you didn't land anything, then they're going to win because the charge does a lot of damage, right? Um, when you're using charge, be a little bit careful because the hitboxes are a little weird and the other Reinhardt can see you a mile away if you do it at a distance. So just get out of the way, get a free hit on you, and use their own charge on you for a guaranteed hit. And of course, if you guys didn't know, there's absolutely no reason to hit your right click in this fight at all. Fire Strike, Charge, and the melee hits will go right through the shield as if it's not there. In fact, the only thing that it can block is the ultimate, which you can't actually get because neither Reinhardt will do enough damage to build their ult. Alright, next up is Roadhog, and he's kind of in a similar situation to like Mei and Reaper where you don't want to be the, the first one to do something. So, Skill, how do we win the Roadhog match? Right, so Roadhog's a little bit tricky. Um, he only has four bullets, essentially, until he has to reload, which is very long. So you want to be picky with how you shoot. If they're at an extreme long range, there's no reason to, to shoot because you'd have to reload and then they can just heal up the any little damage that you do to them. Um, so like with the Reaper situation, you want to use your hook to secure a kill rather than to bring them closer to you. Because even though you get the first hit as soon as you hook them, they also get to get their hit in, hook you, and then get a free hit in as well. Uh, so essentially, they get to double dip while you only got one. So uh, in that situation, you just automatically lose. So 
hook last and you should win. Another big factor is the pellets are very RNG based at a distance especially. So uh, you're going to have to pray to the RNG gods for that one. Uh, usually when the match starts you're going to do a little bit of poking and it's not going to be a big of a deal because you're just going to heal it up. Uh, usually people get tired of waiting and the, they go in for the kill. Uh, just make sure you have decent aim and you remember not to hook first. All right, so next up is Winston. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is almost all about just getting in the first hits, correct? Yeah, so you want to get in that first hit. If you do, then you will probably, probably win the fight. Now, before you actually queue for 1v1s, go into your controls, go to Winston and set his sensitivity pretty high. Um, the reason is because you don't need to have perfect accuracy and you're going to need to be able to do an instant 180 on command uh, if you can't do that already. Uh, the reason being because his beam is channeled, there's no aim involved or anything. It'll just latch onto your opponent if, as long as you're looking in its general direction. Um, so, you know, if you keep your beam channeled on them longer than they do on you, then you automatically win. Another thing that you have to keep in mind is his jump. Now you can use your beam and the jump at the same time. Oh, and that's very underused that I've seen. Uh, your jump actually does a pretty good fixed amount of damage. So you're going to want to use the jump to deal damage rather than get away or close the gap. If you jump more times successfully on your opponent than they do, then you can come back from a bad situation where maybe he got the first hit off on you. As far as the barrier goes, it doesn't do anything, so there's no reason to put it down. Now, what about using quick melee? Uh, the melee actually is not worth using because it does less damage per second than your beam does. Uh, you can use it if you're in a bad spot and they have like 10 health left. Go ahead, quick melee, right? But the situation, you know, the, the times that that situation actually occurs is very small. All right, moving on to Zarya. Zarya is interesting because we are on that topic of if you use your ability first, then you lose. Well, in Zarya's case, you actually get a benefit from using your barrier first. Uh, so what ends up happening is if you're close enough to use your left click, you're always going to be close enough to deal damage. Usually Zarya's will never get away from you at this point, or they'll never try to get away from you. They'll try to get closer to you. So if you use your barrier first and they stop attacking, your barrier gets to come off cooldown faster than theirs does, meaning you get more barriers per minute than they do, which just means that you have an advantage in and of itself. Uh, the only thing you have to worry about with Zarya is make sure you have decent tracking. If you have good tracking and you never let a tick drop off, you should win. What about using left click versus right click? Right click is something that you would do from a range. Uh, you can also try to get them to use their barrier when they right click so you get more effective damage if you manage to get up close with your left click um, however if you're up close to them there's no reason to use right click over left click all right we're going to be moving on to the support roles but at the time of this recording both lucio and mercy are not available in the 1v1 Blizzard has said that they're going to add them eventually, but right now they're not available. So the first one we're going to go with is Anna. Basically, for this character, you're going to want to hide in the corner and wait for your sleep dart to come off cooldown. If you land your sleep dart on them, you instantly win. Um, you can try to take the, the aim battle, uh, but there's nothing stopping them from waiting it out and just healing themselves. So, you know, it's you can either go AFK, like the Tolbarone Bastion strategy, and uh, hopefully, you know, they don't approach you and you can just wait it out for a draw, or you can try to get your sleep dart off, and then you can do the left click, grenade, left click combo to secure yourself the win. Next up is Symmetra. This is uh, probably one of the more fun 1v1s. So how does this one usually go? Oh, yeah, this is a oh, this is so fun. This character is so fun to play. All right, so what you actually do is you go into your base, you sit in the corner, and you put turrets up, and you wait. That's that's how you win. <laughs> that's how you win a symmetric. Because if you approach, you just I mean they're gonna do the same thing, right? So there's, 
There's no reason to. Every now and then you get an actual person who's like, I, I, I don't like Symmetra, and they'll actually not use turrets and they'll approach you. In that situation, if you land your left click first, you win. Now don't use your left click when you think you're in range, use it slightly before you think you're in range, uh, because the thing will latch on further than it actually looks. So you can get that extra tick in if they're not doing the same thing. Um, otherwise, I, you know, that's a wasted minute of your time. <laughs> just, just sit, just sit in your spawn room or in a hallway or somewhere, and uh, and just, it just, <laughs> it just wait for it to, to end in a draw. Exactly. Just make sure that you don't get kicked for inactivity. And the very last character is Zenyatta. For Zenyatta, uh, if you get the jump on your opponent, you can throw your Discord orb on them, and if you are quick enough, you can hide behind a corner so they can't throw theirs on you. Now keep in mind that your orb will show their location so that you get free hits up if they go around the corner. It does dissipate after a few seconds, but if they're un unknowing or they don't play Zenyatta a lot, then they might not realize that this is the case. Zenyatta also has a little bit of built-in shield, so it is possible for him to regenerate the, you know, a portion of his life back if you're not taking uh, damage recently. Um, other than that, this character, you know, it's it's projectile based his attacks, so you can dodge and weave, and uh, basically it'll feel like you're not hitting anything. Now, if you're a Zenyatta player or you play Pharah or May characters like this, then it'll feel less that way because you'll be more used to the way projectiles work. If you're a hit scan player, it'll feel a little odd to you. Now, what about using the uh, the right click charge up? If you decide to go the uh, stairs route as soon as the game starts, then you can charge your right click before you get to your doorway. And uh, if they go the same way, then there's a possibility that you can just one-shot them right as soon as you see them. Uh, they could also be doing the same thing to you, keep that in mind. Uh, most of the time this won't work, and if it does, you're only going to hit a few of the orbs, in which case they can just wait a few seconds for their shield to regen. Now because you have the shields and they can regen, not only for you, but also for your enemy since they're also playing the same character, are you going to try to engage them up close, or are you going to try to keep a more long range distance and just hope to get like a couple like lucky headshots with a discord so if you're feeling confident or if you're feeling lucky then uh in order to get you through with the game basically you're gonna have to confront them or if you're not feeling so hot then you can just stand back and do the whole uh draw thing all right guys that is gonna be about it for this one i'll be uploading a lot more tips guides and the latest in overwatch news so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of it thanks so much for watching if you like the video make sure you leave a like share it with your friends remember always always blame the controller because it's never your fault